Hello, folks, and welcome to this afternoon hangout. 509 Eastern Time and 409 Central. And we're looking at mm, might be a product you hate. It might be a product you don't care about. I talked to other people about joining us. They were not interested. Uh, but I have uh, John and Neely, and we're looking at a product called Mogan David Pomegranate. Now, how long has it been on the market? This I do not know. We know that Mogan David or Mogan David, and some people say Morgan David, but let me assure you, there's no R in that name. <laughs> but you'll hear people saying Morgan David. Sorry. Um, this brand or, or line of wines has been on the market since 1933. So we're talking about 85 years. Uh, it's now a company called the Wine Group LLC. And the Wine Group LLC sort of like evolved from Mogan David. And at one time, I think it was owned by Coca-Cola and it went through but uh, different uh, iterations. But now it's a big old company and they own a lot of brands like Franzia, Almaden, Corbett Canyon. And it goes on and on. You, I brought the website up here and um, they do cheap stuff like this and rather expensive stuff. So I paid three dollars and forty nine cents plus tax at. Aquista Paces on U.S. Highway 190 in um, Covington, Louisiana. You probably paid similar, maybe more, huh? I paid uh, four ninety nine, so a little bit more, but I mean, I think it's probably going to be worth it. Yes, this one's ten percent. Now I think the others, the the Concord Grape and the Blackberry, are eleven percent. If I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna go put this back in the fridge because it's saying serve chilled. But if you notice on the bottle it says serve chilled and then they list all the things you should drink it with. Well, we're doing it neat. <laughs> right. It has enough flavor to uh, not really need to be mixed from what I could tell. I don't see why you would wanna really Mix it because it's already got a lot of sugar, cane sugar. And I could see maybe, um, you know, people that want to mix it with like uh, sparkling water or something just to give it a little carbonation without taking away from the flavor. Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. He's been having... Sorry, I thought I had it muted. Okay, what now? Um, I was just saying I could see how maybe some people would want to mix it with sparkling water kind of... Uh, to give it a little carbonation without taking away too much from the flavor. But um, I don't know though, you look at the website, they've got about 50 different recipes for, uh, and actually on the label you were talking about, it says um, you can mix it with iced tea or club soda, lemon lime or ginger ale. So they recommend that you mix it. Yeah, and it didn't sound like any of those sounded like something I'd want to mix it with. They, they make the Concord, the original, the blackberry flavored, which I didn't find it had too much blackberry flavor, and the pomegranate. Now, you've had the other two? Um, actually, no. I have had, um, I've been getting into wine a little bit more lately. I've started drinking some of the Manischewitz wines. I've had their Concord grape and their blackberry, uh, which I'm guessing are going to be very similar to, to this wine. Um, uh oh. Let's see. I don't know. I guess I am still live. Okay. Here we go. But um, I have not had the Mogan David yet. Why? Well, dropped off for a moment. Um, can you hear me all right? But I, I was just, yeah, I was just saying that I've had um, several varieties of the uh, Manischewitz, but the Mogan David I have not had yet, but I'm sure they're, they're probably pretty comparable. Um, products. The um, Manischewitz is the more popular one. Um, funny thing about that, there's two versions of each. They'll have the kosher and the kosher kosher for Passover. And the kosher is made with corn syrup and they're not too good. <laughs> and the kosher for Passover is made with cane sugar, you know, from sugar cane. Right. And they're a lot they seem to be a little nicer. Um, there's also Manischewitz food. 
you can go to a grocery store here and they have Manischewitz crackers and Manischewitz um, matzo, all kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> oh, well. I gotta say, I, I went ahead and poured mine. mine. And it, it smells like uh, Welch's grape juice. <laughs> yeah, but I, you'll notice that even more prominently with the Concord and the Blackberry. But yeah. I was thinking about this earlier today. It was saying, uh, I was reading the tasting notes and said an incredibly smooth, tasty delight. It is smooth. That has the perfect balance of sweetness and a hint of tartness. And I was thinking about that and I said, it really does have a tart note to it. I, I, I guess they're putting pomegranate juice in it. I don't know. It's not artificial flavors. So. Yeah, it smells. It smells very pleasant. Uh, um, it does have that. It's very sweet. Now, like Jean Pierre, he says, "Oh, it's too sweet. I can't handle it." You know, but. Um, but it has that little citrus fruit tartness. It does. I, I just took a sip. It does have a little bit of, of tartness to it uh, that the Manischewitz uh, wines that I've had don't necessarily have. They're more like sweet. And then um, there's really not much else there. This There's a little, a little um, tartness to this. I'll give you a little bit of information real fast. There's two websites. There's <clears throat> the wine group.com the wine group.com one word and uh, they'll have a little section about this and um, <clears throat> there's a link to the other website mogandavid.com and they like you said they have an enormous amount of recipes there's a locator tool um, so it's pretty what you'd say user friendly um, just to go back to the wine group LLC their portfolio, they have, I'll read a few of these. Uh, fish Eye, you might have heard of Fish Eye Wine. Uh, Glen Ellen, Foxhorn. Uh, now, some of these I've not heard of. Save Me, San Francisco, Slow Press, Stave and Steel, Trapiche, Love Noir. Well, we've, Glen Ellen, well, we've heard of Glen Ellen. Imagery, I've not heard of that. Uh, I'm sure we're familiar with MD 2020. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, I knew you were you were getting to that one. Um, oh, oh goodness, he dropped off again. But yeah, the MD 2020. I'm sure we're going to talk about that for a minute when he gets back on here. That that is like the lowest of the low as far as uh, budget wise and quality wise. Um, but I have had the the Mad Dog 2020. Um, I guess it's just their grape flavor. Um, but that is that's about as cheap as you can get with uh, this type of product. So, and Ron was actually talking about on his solo video, the label actually is kind of similar uh, to the Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. I mean, obviously they're different, but. You can kind of, if, if you look at them side by side, you can see um, the similarities with the label. So hopefully Ron will be back with us shortly. Here we go. There he is. So uh, I was just saying, you had mentioned on your solo video we're talking about the Mad Dog 2020 and the label. There are some similarities with the label of the Mogan David and the Mad Dog 2020. Yeah. When I jump around from web website to website, for some reason a uh, Microsoft Edge will kick you off. And uh, yeah, it, it's easy to jump back on. I like to use the Edge though because um, I find that I, I rarely have audio problems, if ever. I cut. I have the uh, Google Hangouts through Google Chrome up, and then I go through Microsoft Edge to look up stuff while we're doing the Hangout, and it seems like they don't really interfere with each other. I think when you have multiple tabs open through the same browser is when you start having issues. Yeah, I think you're right. I um, I used to love doing Firefox for the Hangouts, but 
they stopped supporting Google Hangouts around a year ago, so I couldn't use that. I never had problems with that ever, 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 ever. Yeah. But there was some plugin. Yeah, I love Firefox. I was I was hoping that when they came out with the newest version, that they would um, be compatible with the Hangouts again. But I guess they don't want to have anything to do with them because there's so many glitches with it. Yeah, they said no. They, they said the technology was so poor they didn't want to mess with it. But anyway, um. MD2020, that's got all these flavored things. I don't want to touch those. I did the grape wine. At call, room temperature. <laughs> yeah, they call it red grape. Right. Uh, I've had that, and um, it's actually, it's not terrible. I drank my um, serving super cold, and it was pretty good. I can't imagine drinking it at room temperature, but... Uh, but it was it was actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was really really sweet, uh, even sweeter than these than the Mogan David and the Manischewitz products, I think. But the cooingly sweet, whereas these I think are pleasantly sweet. Yeah, the 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 Mogan David twenty twenty. That's like, oh, I did it. You know, I did it. I said I did it. You know, but I, to revisit it, mm, the Richards Wild Irish Rose. I had it the first time, New Year's Eve, 1996, and I couldn't finish it. I dumped it out. I did it again about two years ago or a year ago, and um, I could tolerate it. Oh, that's – I'm sorry. That's the one that you drank at room temperature, I believe, not the not the Mad Dog. I can't remember. I did one where I did it at room temperature, and then I redid it at chilled, you know, and I preferred it at room temperature. I think it might have been Richard's, but uh, – Oh, well, there's some other ones, too, that I haven't ever seen. People keep telling me, what about this? What about that? And I said, I haven't seen them. You know, these other kind of questionable things. But the, the Mogan David or Mogan David, it's everywhere, and it does sell. Now, you might look down on it, not you, but the viewer might say, oh, no, not that stuff. Well, you know, it's been on the market for 85 years. Uh, they even used to have television commercials. So... You know, I mean, it's it's a thing. People buy it. I know a lot of right. people that tell me, oh, I like to drink that. You know, and so I see people buying it. So. It's funny. When I uh, when I bought it the other day, I was, I was at Publix, and I was checking out, and the uh, the lady at the – or the cashier, she said, oh, are, are you buying this for Passover? <laughs> and I said, I said, no. I said, it is kosher. I said, but I just wanted to try it. I said um, – she was like, oh, she, she kind of looked at me like, well, that's weird that you would drink it if you're not Jewish. I don't know. That's strange because um, here in this parish, or you would say county, we don't have counties, it sells very, you know, it's a big seller. But uh, I would say that number of people buying it who are Jewish is probably less than 1%. So that, that would be a question that would, people would say, what are you – you know, a lot of people would even say, what are you talking about, Passover? Even they might ask the question, what is Passover? You know what I'm saying? That's the level right. of knowledge that the people have. So now in New Orleans, it would be different, you see. Uh, let's see. Tyler Mansell says, been too long since I've had wine. Maybe soon he'll have it. Good to switch it up. I think so, Tyler. It's fun to sw switch up. Anna's McNazik says, William Kepley, we need you, bro. He he makes that comment every time. We do, but we can't make William join the Hangouts. I hope. This I think. I think he's going to join Tyler. Uh, Tyler's channel for the organic beer review on Friday night. So tune in for that one, okay. and you might catch a uh, a William Kepley, a glimpse of William Kepley on the Hangout. I hope I'm not too late for that. I hope this tastes better than MD 2020. Says Tyler. Well, yes, it does. To me, MD 2020 is like. When they're in Westfield, New York, and they're at the the the, the um, winery, and they're making this Mogan David, and it doesn't come out right, they'll say, "Oh, mm, okay, MD twenty, you know, ship it down, ship it to the MD twenty twenty area <laughs> or something like that," you know. But um, yeah, from what I remember, the MD twenty twenty was more alcohol forward and more coyingly sweet. Uh, and it's been a long time since I've had the MD twenty twenty, but that's what I remember. It's been a while for me, and I'm I'm happy about that. Um, 
Backwoods <laughs> Billy says, Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. It's Holy Thursday. Tomorrow is Good Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. So I'm sure a lot of people will be eating ham Sunday because <laughs> um, I see a lot of all these grocery stores are saying we have a big special on ham. OK. Well, kosher wine and ham, something doesn't something something doesn't jibe there. <laughs> but um, this thing is pretty red, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of when you hold it up to light, it's uh, it's like ruby red almost. You talked about Wel Welch's grape jelly. It makes sense because the kind of grapes they use to make this wine are the exact type of grapes they use to make the grape jelly, Concord. Um, so that's what they taste like. <laughs> right. That may or may not appeal to people. Some people love grape jelly. I'm one of those people. I don't necessarily want to drink grape jelly. I'd rather put it on a sandwich with peanut butter. But um, um, this does not have high fructose corn syrup like most of the jellies do, I might add. They, you know, they take the cheap route. They don't use cane sugar. They use the government subsidized sweetener. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so what do you think about the flavor? Uh, so far, I'm really liking it. I, I know you're not really too big into a lot of these sweeter wines, but I have gotten into wine again a little bit. Uh, when I went to Tennessee, to Gatlinburg, there's, this, this is actually the glass I'm drinking this out of was their local winery. Uh, I bought some muscadine wine when I was there. And I really, really enjoyed it. it it's a really sweet wine. Um, and it kind of got me interested in wine again. Um, I used to drink wine when I was younger, just a little bit, but I would mix it. I would drink it, you know, on the rocks with uh, some Sprite or some sparkling water and kind of have like a spritzer type thing. Uh, maybe garnish it with a lemon wedge even. Um, but I've kind of gotten away from that and I, I'm becoming interested in trying a lot of these wines neat and uh, just seeing what they have to offer. And so far, the uh, the sweeter wines are what I'm really getting into. So yeah. I can't seem to get into white wine, like the really dry, uh, not very sweet white wines. Those are not very appetizing, in my opinion. I know a lot of people, I think you like those types of wines. but I like them all right. I have... I have two gallon jugs of them. I bought Carlo Rossi Rhine and uh, Chardonnay, but it was so inexpensive and one was on a closeout. So <laughs> now whether I really like them, well, they're probably all right. Um, I'm only drinking like four ounces a day anyway. Um, my father likes all that sweet wine. He can't stand dry. He says, I can't stand dry wine, you know? Um, but he's very particular. He's a, like extremely particular about all aromas, flavors, and consistency. I think most food he eats, he dislikes. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, so if you ever want to hear a, a highly critical assessment of something, talk to my father. <laughs> and you'll get uh, I do find that the red wines, uh, you know, obviously beer pairs well with food. A lot of beers pair well with food. I think that red wine, particularly some of these sweeter wines, pair very well with meat. Like this would go very good. Like I wish I had a ribeye steak right now to, to eat with this. I think it would pair very nicely with a, a good, you know, cut of meat. Uh, well, I don't know about that myself, but I would certainly rather drink this than drink like a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi-Cola or a Dr. Pepper, any of those soft drinks. I just can't stand those anymore. And I know people like them, okay? I'm not out here to advocate and start preaching about soft drinks or soda or soda pop, whatever people call them, cold drinks. I say soft drink. I can't, I'd rather drink this and I'll just drink four ounces and then drink water. But yeah. uh, I mean, if I was gonna eat a like a ribeye you're saying, I'd probably rather have something really, um, well, you know, like that Michelob Ultra Gold, Pure Gold, or uh, maybe Miller High Life, 
or uh, natural ice or uh, I have a can of that Old English 800. Well, I like those because they're really crisp and it seems to play against the meat. But I mean, whatever you like, I mean, whatever you want. <laughs> but um, I, I don't dislike this. I'm glad I tried it. Um, I can't honestly drink. I can't take sips and say, oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. That would be a lie. I mean, it is good. And this is a little different than the other sweet wines that I've had, like the Blackberry, the Concord Grape, even though those were Manischewitz. Yeah. Those were primarily grape. Now, the Blackberry, I did taste Blackberry with that one in the Manischewitz Blackberry. This one, it's got a lot of grape on the nose, but when you drink it, it does taste, there is some pomegranate on the palate. Yes. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very subtle, but it's there. Yeah, it's a little tart, like they say on the website. Yeah. I don't recall seeing pomegranate 10 years ago, but I wasn't sitting there thinking about it, you know. Um, if you like these sweet wines and these kind of like elevated alcohol, but it's really still a table wine, it has to be above 14% to be a dessert wine. So really 10% is nothing. That's like common, you know. Um, but you might like, I'm thinking about this, um, you might like port wines. I don't know if you ever had those like Fairbanks port or Taylor port. I have not. We were talking about that off air one night. I don't know if you were on there or not, but it's kind of, and I, I don't know a lot about it, but it's it's kind of like a, a brandy wine type of thing. No, Is that right? No, it's, it's a wine like we're drinking here, right? But they'll fortify it with brandy. So they jack up the alcohol with it, and it's it it's a weird thing. Like um, port wine, be they'll start tasting like figs. It's a different type of it's a different type of world, really. And we've got an examination coming up now. These guys in England, they're talking about oh yeah, we're going to review port because it was one of their ideas. But I learned a lesson. You don't go run out and buy it until you make sure they're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because people will say stuff. And then, so I said, well, I got my port wine. What about you? Oh, no, no I hadn't gotten it yet. I said, oh, that was in December. Yeah, I'd be interested in, try, in trying some port wine. Uh, what What's the typical ABV of, of your average port wine? Okay. I mean, how elevated is it, I guess, is what I'm asking. All right, hold on. So they say they're going to do it. Now, wh whether they do it or not, I don't know. But I'll invite you if you want to. We're going to do any port wine. We were trying to find a particular brand, but that turned out to be kind of a fiasco because they're in England and their lineup in England is so different. So it wasn't t working out too well. But it could be in a week, maybe two weeks. Um, the alcohol for port, oh, you're looking at about 14 to 20%. <laughs> oh. The one I have is 19%, so you don't play around with it. Um, you could just really get in trouble. I mean, if you, I saw the glass you poured. If you poured a glass of that 19% port wine, you would be so sorry. <laughs> and I don't mean like, oh, he got high, you know, he's, he's looped up, he's drunk. No, you'd feel terrible. I'm telling you, you'd feel terrible the next day. Well, I did. Uh, that port wine is a little tricky. Um, so I would say just do about four ounces at the most five. That's right. pushing it. Um, but anyone will work. You can get the American made if you want to do Fairbanks or Taylor. They're very inexpensive. Taylor, yeah, Taylor is the one that I saw the other day. I actually saw it. Um, I wasn't really sure. Well, I guess we had been talking about it recently, so I kind of. I looked at him like, oh, so that's there's some port wine, but um, I guess I never just I never really paid attention to it before. But uh, oh yeah, all all the wine all wine outlets in the world, well in America, all of them, and I mean all of them, sell that Taylor Port and um, Fairbanks. They all sell it. Um, Taylor's coming from New York. Fairbanks from California. Um, I bought one from Portugal, actually from Portugal. It's called, um, 
Oh, by golly, what's the name of that stuff? Well, we'll worry about that later. It was about 15 bucks. The tailor might cost you eight, maybe. Might get it cheaper. Right. Now, whether this is better, I don't know. Well, uh, so we'll I'll let you know when we set that up. Okay. Uh, my yeah, I'm doing a little research on the poor one. I'd be interested to know a little bit more about that process. Uh whether they're using like barrel, I guess it may, it might depend on the brand too. Like, are they just, are they using like barrel aging to increase the alcohol with the, with brandy or are they adding brandy to the wine? It's a, it's a rabbit hole because you get on there and start reading its pages and pages and it goes into this. There's, there's whole groups dedicated to it. There's people that only drink that they have, YouTube channels dedicated to it. You know what I'm saying? It's like a hole. It's like you're, right. you're looking in this little hole and you look inside and it's huge. So you can get caught up in it. But I mean, I was doing the port, but I couldn't, there weren't too many people that I knew that were interested. A few say, oh yeah. But um, same thing with Sherry. I was saying, hey, let's all drink Sherry and test it and talk about Sherry wine. Cause that's another rabbit hole. It gets really involved. Right. But the uh, response was, you noticed there was no sound? That yeah. Was, that was the was right. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, there was no response. <laughs> that was the response to sharing, uh, much <laughs> like port. That, and I, I basically encountered that with brandy. I was like, oh, wow, I'm trying all these different brandies. What do y'all think? And they were as like, much as I love I yeah, I really enjoy your uh, your brandy reviews, and I, I really enjoyed looking at the Christian Brothers brandies with you. And um, I've been drinking E and J brandy for a long time, the VS. Um, so I think I would probably really enjoy port wine because I I love brandy um, yeah. as much, if not more, than bourbon whiskey. Uh -huh. And it has some relationship. It's not the same, but it, you might, I think you're going to like it. Um, but the thing when I was doing the brandy reviews, the major, the, the biggest comment I ever got from people was, oh, wow, that's a cool brandy. When are you going to do whiskey? I was like, that's all people ask me about. They don't care about the brandy. So I just said, well, I'm throwing in the towel. I wanted to literally take a towel and throw it in and say, okay, I give up. I'm going to do whiskey because I mean, personally, I don't even care. And if that's all people are asking me about, I may as well go and get caught up in that. I didn't want to do whiskey. I told them 2025, wait till 2025. But then they kept asking, what about whiskey? What about? I said, okay, <laughs> you may as well do what people want. Um, so um, especially if you're indifferent to it, like me, like you don't really care either way. So why not go with what people want, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I have no attachment to um, brandy. Um, well, anyway, but I do intend to try some more for sure. But um, so we're 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 favorable towards this, right? I believe so. Yeah, I I really like it. I mean, it is a very sweet wine, um, much like the Manischewitz line. This is a very sweet product. I'm sure the other Mogan David products are probably similar to this, um, as far as the sweetness. There is something to be said about the uh cane sugar i think because i have sat, had some wines that are um that have that are made with the corn syrup and they're not as good uh so the cane sugar is it, it definitely improves the quality of the wine in my opinion um so i would definitely seek out more products like this that are um certified kosher as you like to say for passover <laughs> yes for passover because if it just says certified kosher you can take ten dollars and put money down, and you're gonna win because it's gonna be made with cane syrup. Um, I mean, corn syrup. Um, oh yeah, that's that's the key. They sell Pepsi Cola here that's made with the sugar, cane sugar, and then they also sell Pepsi made with corn syrup, and it's not the same drink. I mean, it's a joke. Right. You drank Pepsi with sugar, cane sugar, and then you drank Pepsi with corn syrup. You'll never drink Pepsi with corn syrup again. I know I'll tell you that much. You, you, you'll 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 develop very quickly a, a 
You just feed it. You'll feed it. Okay, Brandon. Okay, a few comments. Nick Vukusic says pop. I don't know what pop means. Okay, Roscoe 1972 says too sweet. I tend to agree with that, but eh, I like sweet things anyway, a little bit. Brandon Dvorak says try some Colorossi Burgundy. Well, I've never heard of Colorossi. Oh, you mean Carlo Rossi? <laughs> Very popular brand of, of wine, yeah. I thought, that, that I thought that was a different brand, Colorossi. He's spelling it wrong. Oh, yeah, I've, I've done video reviews for Carlo, Carlo Rossi Burgundy. Yeah, Burgundy, yeah. That's one, yeah, they sell in the big, uh, the huge, like, gallon jugs or whatever they are. The yeah, really big and, the and the Livingston and the Gallo family. Oh, yeah, those are great. Yeah, those are great. John and Neely says, what's, oh, at Anos Mc says, John Anili, what's good, bro? I get wicked. <laughs> he said, and then I got to get off this. I got to go walking. He says, I get wicked hangovers with sweet items. Laugh out loud. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're drinking gallons, you know. Jury D says, hello from Dortmund, Germany. Well, hello back to you in Dortmund, Germany. I want to I wanna say that I love the Dortmunder Action Brower Eye products like D-A-B Dob. Great beers, great beers. <laughs> so that's it. I would say yes. I'm glad I tried the Mogan David pomegranate. Would I buy it again? Uh, maybe. I doubt it. I'm not. But I'm. That's kind of an unfair question because I'm always trying different things. So, you know, I'll, yeah. what about you? Last comments. I uh, I like this. Um, I would definitely be interested in trying some of their other products as well see how they stack up um i mean this is a very good product um it is very sweet i mean i wouldn't drink more than i mean you know one, one glass of this is is plenty um because it, it is it is very sweet there is a lot of of uh sugar in in this but it's very pleasant it would it would pair well with food i can see why a lot of people would want to mix it with uh you know, like a, a Sprite or a seltzer uh, or like a, a sparkling water. Um, but, but yeah, very pleasant. I, I, I give it a thumbs up and I will definitely be looking to try some of their other wines as well, I think. Yes, I think you'll like the other two, maybe not as much as this one. They're all the same price and I'd give it a thumbs up as well. And so anyway, I'll close out by saying I'm going walk. <laughs> I'm going walking people. And then, um, also, uh, I have the Jack Daniels old number seven and the, the number seven, the green label and Jim Beam <laughs> uh, and Ancient Age <coughs> and Kentucky Tavern. But <laughs> um, if you want, if you're interested in, within the next hour, say, to uh, examine any of those, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just do my little uh, quota for today, today for uh, trying to drink down the bourbons. And I'll probably continue to work on the Redemption High Rye, which I'm not super favorable towards, as you probably noticed from my um, taste challenges. Right. Yeah, when we did the examination, I mean, it was, I think we all kind of agreed that it was, it was obviously very rye forward, but it was lacking a lot of character because it was only, eight, you know, the, the very, it's a very young whiskey, so it doesn't have a lot of complexity to it. Yeah, so I felt cheated paying twenty four dollars for that thing plus yeah. tax. I paid a lot. I paid like thirty for it. I paid over thirty dollars for mine. No thanks. That is that is no kind of value. I would rather buy. I would. This is. I'm not just being sarcastic. I would literally rather buy the Mogan David pomegranate for three dollars and forty nine cents over the Redemption High Rye any day of the week. Oh yeah, this this is a great value product. Absolutely. So. Yep, I agree. And oh, last comment. Jury D says, Dob is so nice. If you have the chance to get Brinkhoff's number one in the States, then try it. It's one of the favorite beers here in Dortmund. Well, I have to tell you, unfortunately, I've never seen Brinkhoff's, but that doesn't mean I won't turn around this weekend and see it. <laughs> Ad Ad Nosmic, are you a comedian? Ad Nosmic says, these casts, these are webcasts, are therapeutic, no joke. I'm glad. I'm glad we can help you with your therapy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks, watching this video production.